Good afternoon, I'm Spot On Weather, meteorologist Matthew Euler, with a weather lesson segment. What causes the seasons? So let's take a look at what causes the seasons. The main cause of the seasons is the Earth. It revolves around the sun, different positions throughout the year. So the sun's right in the center, and the Earth is revolving around the sun. All right? And this revolution typically takes 365 and one quarter days. That usually constitute a full calendar year. And that the only exception to that is leap year where we go to 366 days for the complete revolution of the Earth around the sun. Uh, at various points throughout the Earth's journey throughout the year, we have different seasons that are created. Up top here we have the autumnal equinox, which is the first day of autumn in the northern hemisphere. To the left here we have the winter solstice, uh, where the first day of winter occurs in the northern hemisphere, which we're approaching now. The vernal equinox is where the first day of spring in the northern hemisphere, and then the summer solstice, the first day of summer in the northern hemisphere. Um, one thing I want to point out, the tilt of Earth's axis is at 23.5 degrees relative to the plane of the ecliptic. The tilt in conjunction with the revolution of the Earth around the Sun produces varying degrees of solar radiation and day length during the year. Okay, so I wanted to focus in on this right here. The, the plane of the ecliptic, the way the Earth revolves is at a 23.5 degree angle. Okay, the axis of rotation here, 23.5 degree plane of, uh, of the ecliptic, basically. So it's not straight up and down. The Earth is not positioned straight up and down and spins perfectly straight up and down on a vertical axis. You notice how this axis is tilted at a 23.5 degree angle. So that's very important consideration. The tilt of Earth's axis um, along with the revolution, the varying positions of the Earth around the Sun throughout the year produce these varying amounts of solar radiation and day lengths during the year. And that's a lot, it's all dependent on the latitude or location of a, of a loca uh, basically a location of a place on the Earth's surface. So some key dates, March 20th again is the vernal equinox, spring in the northern hemisphere, first day of spring. And it's the opposite in the southern hemisphere where it's the first day of fall. Um, in the northern hemisphere, we have the most direct rays of the sun over the equator. And there's 12 hours of daylight and night everywhere on the Earth. So for the autumnal equinox, the sun basically shines uh, over the equator. It's most direct over the equator in both cases. Um, so we have 12 hours of day and night everywhere. June 21st, the summer solstice. It's the first day of summer in the Northern Hemisphere, as I had mentioned. The most direct rays of the sun are overhead the Tropic of Cancer at 23.5 degrees north latitude. And this is the longest day of the year in the Northern Hemisphere. So the sun's rays are shining down most direct over that location. And June 21st, by the way, is opposite in the Southern Hemisphere. It's the first day of winter. September 21st, around that time period, is the autumnal equinox. And again, the most direct rays of the sun will reside over the equator, where we have 12 hours of day and night everywhere on Earth. And then finally, the December 21st time period, which we're rapidly approaching here in a few weeks, is the winter solstice, where the most direct rays of the sun are overhead the Tropic of Capricorn at 23.5 degrees south latitude. And this is the shortest day of the year in the Northern Hemisphere. <clears throat> it's the first day of summer in the Southern Hemisphere. All right, <clears throat> now moving on to the next slide here. <clears throat> Let's take a look at the Earth-Sun relationship. Okay, so we have two terms that we talk about. We have aphelion and perihelion. The blue ball here represents Earth. Here's the Sun, and here's the way the Earth is basically revolving around the Sun. Aphelion is a point where the Sun is farthest from the Earth. And then perihelion is where the Sun is closest to the Earth. So what happens, <clears throat> the, the perihelion, this occurs around, typically around January 3rd, 
and then aphelion occurs typically around July 3rd. So why in the world, my question is, why isn't winter warmer when the sun is closest to Earth in January and coldest when the sun is farther away from Earth in July, right? We look at the relationship here again and we'll go back. Perihelion, farthest away in July, but yet it's the hottest time of year. Perihelion, the sun is closest to Earth, and that occurs in January. So why in the world is that the case? Why is it not winter warmer and summer colder based on that relationship between the Earth and the sun? This is due to the angle at which the sun's rays reach the Earth's surface. So we have to take a look at solar radiation angles. And if this was your house, for example, look at the difference of the sun angles. The sun and this these dashed lines here represent the path of the sun's rays heating your house throughout the year. So at December 21st, the winter solstice, this line is more slanted with respect to the surface, right? It's, it's more spread out. It's a, it's a, it's a much a lower sun angle at that point in time above the horizon. Whereas the vernal and autumnal equinox, March and September 21st time period, the sun is, you know, basically in between the winter solstice and the summer solstice where the sun's position. And then notice in summertime how much more direct or overhead the sun is to this house. Okay? So the sun's rays strike this house much, much greater. The, the, basically the much lower sun angles in winter will result in greater scattering and longer distances. For solar energy to reach Earth's surface, okay, and then additionally, the greater spreading out of those solar rays and energy results in lower temperatures. While a much higher sun angle, like we have with the summer solstice, more directly overhead, result in greater absorption of heat at the surface and smaller surface area of surface heating as well, and higher temperatures. And so let's take a look at greater versus lesser spreading of solar radiation. So notice if the sun is directly overhead, more directly overhead here, 90 degrees straight down to the Earth's surface, you're going to get a much smaller, more concentrated area and greater absorption of heat energy at the surface as compared to a slanted sun angle, which requires more atmosphere to pass through, which could result in a lot more scattering before it even reaches the surface. Look at your difference in energy reached at the surface. This is a 45 degree angle versus a 90 degree angle. 342 watts per square meter of energy with a 90 degree angle is received at the surface of the Earth. If it's a 45 degree angle, it's 242 watts per square meter. So there's a big difference in spreading out of rays. So do this. To prove this point, I want you to take a flashlight. You can do this right at home. Take a flashlight and shine the light straight down onto a piece of paper. Trace the circle of light. After you do that, take a flashlight and shine the light at an angle. Trace the circle of light once again. And then compare your circles, the size of the circles. Notice how big the circles are or small compared to each other they are. The smaller circle represents summer, while the larger circle spread out and represents winter. And I have a, I actually did this before I created the video. All right, I took a flashlight, basically this flashlight right here, all right, and I shined it directly straight down for summer. I basically took the light, shined it straight down on the piece of paper. I traced the circle it created when I put the flashlight directly overhead and I got a much smaller circle. And then I did the same thing here where I, I basically took the flashlight and put it at an angle and my circle got much bigger. That's, that's a simulation of a winter sun angle where the sun is much lower in the sky and the sun has a lot more atmosphere. The rays have a lot more uh, atmosphere to pass through so there's a lot more scattering. A lot of the heat energy from the sun doesn't reach the surface as compared to summer. But you notice how much more spread out this is. Sun rays get spread out over a larger area in the winter. 
much more direct heating, smaller surface area. Look at this. You know, very much direct heating here in this case as compared to that case. So that is why, despite despite the fact that we have perihelion and aphelion, where the sun is closest with perihelion to the Earth on January 3rd, and why it's still the coldest time of the year. Uh, even though the sun is closer to Earth, the angle at which the sun rays shine make all the difference in the world. All right. All right, that wraps up the lesson on uh, what creates the seasons. We really hope you enjoyed the lesson from Spot on Weather. And uh, feel free to send us comments on our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram pages. Everybody have a great afternoon.